Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and good morning. Uh, with me today uh, is Dr. Khairia binti Muhammad Hanafia, the winner of Fame Lab International 2018. Uh, thank you for being here today uh, for spending your time this morning. I'd like to have a conversation with you on your experience winning the Fame Lab International uh, in 2018. It was a year ago. So maybe to start with, uh, Kai, maybe you can uh, share briefly about yourself. Uh, I don't know how much you want to reveal about yourself. And also your life as an academic uh, in USN. Uh, thanks so much, Prof. Karim, for having me. Mm-hmm. And as you say, it's been a year, so I, I can't believe how fast <laughs> it's gone. Yeah. It's nice um, that you're giving me another opportunity yeah. to share my experience uh, a year after the competition. Um, but your first question, a bit about myself. Uh, so I, I, I say uh, I'm a grown-up 90s child. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a grown-up 90s child. Uh-huh. Um, and I have two children of my own. Wow, okay. Two boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're three and six years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, as a family, we just went to watch Toy Story 4, which is one of my childhood things. Okay. Uh, and it was, it was a great movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I highly recommend it mm-hmm. for everyone. So that's my personal bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, as an academic, my... Uh, journey in academia I say began when I did my masters okay. in public health at Johns Hopkins so when at, was that in the US uh, that was in 2009 okay. I graduated 2011 mm-hmm. um, then I did my PhD in translational immunology mm-hmm. in Melbourne okay the land of flat whites <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now I've joined USM for three years and a half Okay. And I'm still trying to establish myself uh, as a researcher here, but my main interest is in infectious disease, uh, especially tuberculosis. Mm-hmm. And in the lab, what we focus on more is finding markers that we can use to develop new tests mm-hmm. that tells us if somebody has the disease, as well as new compounds or, or chemicals that we can use uh, to treat uh, the, the disease. Yeah. Your, your expertise is, uh, sounds to be very similar to our own uh, Vice Chancellor Dr. Asma, right? Yeah, I mean... Tropical I, disease, yeah? Um, yeah, you could consider tuberculosis mm-hmm. a tropical disease. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in a few uh, infectious diseases, especially uh, vaccine-preventable diseases mm-hmm. as well, mm-hmm. mostly bacterial. Um, and, and our uh, Vice Chancellor also worked on a bacterial diagnostic uh, okay. test, which is sal- salmonella, mm-hmm. very important cause of uh, foodborne disease. So I, I think uh, what attracted me to diagnostics is really because it, it kind of uh, marries my previous experience in public health. Mm-hmm. So with public health, you've got different things that you want to address. So the first thing is prevention. So usually with prevention, it could be things like sanitation, it could be mm. things like using vaccines. Um, and then the second level is to actually detect early. Okay. So really good diagnostics, uh, simple to use diagnostics that you can take out to places where there is an electricity. So things like a rapid test, mm-hmm. like the one uh, uh, that the, uh, Professor Asma developed, is very useful for early detection. So that can, can help save a lot of lives actually. So there's mm-hmm. there's that laboratory component, but then also that public health relevance that I really like about uh, rapid diagnostics. Mm. That's why it's one of my interests. sounds sounds very exciting. I think there's a lot of prospect there uh, as far as research uh, is concerned, right? Exciting, yeah. frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> frustrating. <laughs> the, usual, as usual. the usual, yeah. The usual yeah. life of a researcher. That's right. A year ago in 2018, you won the Fame Lab International. Uh, Well, congratulations uh, once again. Thank you. Yeah, can, can you share some uh, insight as uh, how this program like uh, Fame Lab International uh, helps to promote uh, science communication? Right. Um, I mean, firstly, Fame Lab is such a great platform uh, and it really opened a lot of doors for mm-hmm. me personally, mm-hmm. one just through the friends that I made okay. from that experience. 
but it also opened up my mind to this thing called science communication. Mm. So before FameLab, I didn't realize there was communication and science communication. Mm. And I would say there there isn't really a distinction, but uh, the reason why FameLab came about is because um, there was this recognition that when scientists or researchers spoke to people about science, mm -hmm they tend to do it in a very technical way and a lot of people mm -hmm. don't yeah. understand it. Yeah. Uh, so science communication is removing that technical jargony aspect of science and just showing people the beauty and the the wonder of science in, in a way that they can appreciate. Uh, and so there's yeah. actually quite a, a lot of strategies um, involved and the main thing would be to understand who you're speaking to first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And that's something that FameLab has really taught me and mm -hmm. so that affects how I go into anything nowadays like yeah. who am I talking to uh, and how do I talk to them in a way that they understand mm -hmm. and I think a platform like FameLab just gives people like me and other people who are interested in science or researchers in science mm -hmm. that opportunity to to train themselves okay. and try it out so obviously there's a lot of lessons uh, you learn and the skills uh, you have acquired uh, uh, through that uh, experience and exercise preparing for the for the film lab um, competition right so uh, maybe you can share some tips uh, especially for the school students for the aspiring researchers aspiring academics uh, the tips to communicate science uh, effectively in a, in a way that ordinary folks or public can understand yeah, yeah. absolutely so I think the, the first thing as with anything is mm -hmm. preparation is really really important yeah. and part of that preparation is audience profiling mm -hmm. so once you know who you're actually going to talk to okay. what is the purpose of your communication with them okay. um, then you can start thinking about what are the right analogies to use mm -hmm. what kind of language you want to use mm -hmm. and once you can prepare for that uh, everything else falls falls into place uh, ideally what you want to aim mm -hmm. for is to keep it simple yeah keep it engaging and keep it clear mm -hmm. so if you can if you can hit those three targets yeah uh, you're basically doing effective science communication. So you know your audience, right? You need to really know who you're uh, who are talking they, to. Yeah. The level of education. Yeah. Because uh, what they care about. What they care really about. Important. I yeah. think it's quite a challenge, right, to communicate something very technical. Yeah. And with all the jargons. Yeah. And to yeah. distill the main ideas the main and idea. the essence or the gist of it. Yeah. Uh, so how 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 do you actually deal with that? challenge to yeah. make it uh, palatable, consumable, <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean the, the audience can consume it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are some things that I still struggle explaining mm -hmm. um, and so I avoid explaining them for now yeah. until I figure out a really good way yeah. to explain it. But what I try to work on is things that appeal to most people. So things that I think as a human being, mm. I find this interesting and I find this relevant to me. Mm. And this is why, this is the main idea I want everyone to know about what I'm working on. Mm. So I don't really talk about the more technical aspects mm. uh, because it's difficult to explain sometimes and yes. sometimes they don't need to know that uh, okay. to be able to appreciate so you have to be very idea. selective. You have to be very selective, selective. with what kind of content mm -hmm. you even want to talk about in the mm -hmm. first place. And it has to be what this audience will likely care about and can understand within mm -hmm. that amount of time. Mm -hmm. right? Um, this is assuming you're giving a, an oral presentation. Yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and so I, I try to work on things that I know most people will know, or at least most of the people who are going to be listening to me and we'll, they can we'll relate know. to. They can relate to. They they can find some relevance mm -hmm. to their own life. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's it's based on some common knowledge mm. they already have, mm. and then introduce some new ideas that are very well explained. So I find uh, a good analogy <coughs> is mm. very very useful. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure actually uh, before you won the fame lab, uh, because when we watch the video. You look so calm, you know, uh, and so composed. I'm sure you have already have some innate ability or skill actually to communicate uh, well. Uh, so, is there any you know the background, the history of you? Maybe you know you involved in debate and things like that. 
<laughs> I was actually involved in debate. Ah, I was tell, not us, very, tell us more about that. Yeah. I was not a very good debater in the beginning. Okay. I wasn't. I was definitely not the best. Yeah. But I, I was always really interested in it. Mm-hmm. And I think over time, uh, I I realized that there were some things that worked and some things that didn't. Mm-hmm. And so over time, you have this person who, who you mm-hmm. see as me on this stage yeah. is somebody that I think represents who I want people to see yeah, yeah. Um, but again that took took some time and and I, I'm still really really nervous <laughs> uh, but yeah. I can I can hide it a bit better I think yeah. over time so I, I think it's really important to keep working on it okay. like don't yeah. don't feel like I'm not good at it I'm not gonna do it it has to be I'm not good at it now, mm-hmm. but I can get better, and I think that's true for everyone. You yeah. can always be a better person. Yeah. yeah, you have to constantly improve, learn, and improve the skill. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The learning never stops, isn't it? <laughs> okay, Kai. Um, it was a year ago, 2018, and since then, I think you have been invited to speak at many uh, conferences, seminars, uh, sharing session, and and so on. Um, well. Uh, you are now almost like a, what you call celebrity scientist, <laughs> <laughs> celebrity scientist, <laughs> celebrity. So, how, how does winning the Fame Lab has really you know changed your life in some ways or your daily routines? Maybe you would like to share with us. Celebrity. <laughs> celebrity. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny because right after Fame Lab, uh-huh. it was actually quite a crazy time. Uh. I will say that because you know, from essentially just having nobody that I need to deal mm-hmm. with, suddenly a lot of people left A lot of right. attention. A lot of, att- a lot of, sort of ex- <laughs> attention and expectation. And your posters are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was a strange time. Yeah. Very, 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 I mean, it was exciting as mm-hmm. well because mm-hmm. it was very new. Yeah. I got recognized a few times, uh, which is, you know, nice. Uh. But I would say uh, now, a year later, um, all of that is pretty much... Cooling down. It's definitely yeah. cooled down. Cool it's down, it's yeah. very, I feel like it's a, a normal, life, normal life, but a different kind of normal. Uh-huh. I, I'm still, as you say, um, busier Being than I busier. was before yeah. because I, I mean, I think now that people know who I am, there's mm-hmm. some visibility, there's some mm. responsibilities given to me um, inside and outside of USM okay. that I need to commit to. Okay. And so that involves a lot of time management uh, so you have to kind of juggling juggling of, more things travel. more things now more travel more travel because, uh, yeah, yeah yeah I just work by deadlines hmm. <laughs> so that's basically the biggest change that I, I feel I, I have I'm, I'm doing a lot more things outside of my previous comfort zone yeah um, if before I was focused more on my research my teaching now it's also about capacity building, uh, more engagement. I mean, there's still I'm still very much involved with Fame Lab mm-hmm. as a platform. Okay. Um, as a trainer, wow. uh, we, we I just emceed the last uh, national Fame Lab, so that was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. obviously things are getting bigger and bigger, right? Because the I hope so. uh, because I think the visibility really gave you or uh, open up uh, a lot of uh, new avenues for you right opportunities as well yeah in, in some yeah. ways definitely mm-hmm. but I, I, I think it's I still try to maintain mm-hmm. control over what I find suitable with what I want in life mm-hmm. and also my personality yeah so there there's a, I mean I I don't have a social media account. Okay. I, I don't have Facebook and Instagram. Like, so some people. Which is rare these days. Rare. I used to have it. I closed ah, okay. it for, for some yeah, reason. Yeah. Okay. Um. But people kept on saying, "Oh, you should have a YouTube channel. You should do this. You should do that." And okay. and I understand there is some um, benefit and importance in using yeah. those channels mm-hmm. to communicate science. But at the same time, I also know myself. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like there are other ways I can keep on yeah. working on it. Yeah. Because it's, I'm just not so comfortable with it. So, so yeah. it's been it's been a balance of um, meeting some of those expectations mm-hmm. while also keeping true to myself. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Kai. Let, let's talk about um, this science communication. Um, do you have any idea how to promote this uh, science communication uh, at a larger scale? You know, this is about scaling up this 
uh, to school as well as to higher uh, institutional uh, higher education level so how do we promote science communication to the mainstream yeah uh, well one of the things that uh, i'm working on right now along with <coughs> the uh, young scientists network is the development of a science communication module. Mm -hmm. um, I'm already doing a lot of training, so mm -hmm. workshops um, for science communication as well as okay. communication in general. Okay. And I think it's all about building mm. capacity. Building capacity. You have uh -huh. more people who feel comfortable that mm -hmm. they can do it, mm -hmm. and then you create the platforms. Yeah. You create the platforms, you create that excitement over it, yeah. and I think then it can be more embraced. Uh, yeah. and. For schools especially, I think we, 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 we always talk about how there isn't enough creativity, mm -hmm. not enough opportunity okay. for students to use their imagination. And I think having things like science communication be conducted even at school level mm -hmm. opens up that avenue. The whole mm -hmm. science art thing, okay. that's definitely what science communication would employ as well because yeah. that's how you reach people. Okay. Usually people innately respond to art. Yeah, so yeah. how do you use some of those um, techniques, mm -hmm. uh, some of that beautiful aspect about art and make it shine through science as well? So mm. I think I think it's it's basically those things to promote it. You need to first make people equipped uh, enough to do it. Yeah. And then I think having more opportunities, uh, things like the three minute thesis, things like Fame Lab, or or even more mm. consistent non competitive avenues. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like having blogs, for example, or, or yeah, yeah. yeah, speakers Good corner. Idea. Speakers corner, yeah, yeah. non non competitive, non competitive environment, environment where they feel maybe more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. To you know, uh, you know, to, to, to practice to try the skill. It out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you get two things. You get people who just come there to listen. Mm -hmm. Um, they gain something, and then the people who try to speak to other people, yeah. they also so. Communication is uh, actually something that can be developed and also is a transferable skill, right? Absolutely. So let's, you know, um, if teachers um, or lecturers, academics in the in the university, if they want to transfer the skill to train the students to have this to acquire the skill, they themselves must be also trained Absolutely. and develop those yeah, skills, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. maybe we need some kind of training. So the module that you are developing now. Uh, probably can be useful in yeah. school as well. Yeah. We, we, we were definitely aiming for mm. researchers mm -hmm. to be able to use it, but mm. actually anybody who wants to try and use it to explain technical things mm -hmm. um, should be able to use it. So that yeah. includes teachers or, or science enthusiasts maybe, yeah, yeah. Um, anybody really. Yeah. Uh, the subject matter is science mm -hmm. and how to communicate it in a way that's palatable mm -hmm. to a wider audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, Kai, maybe uh, a little bit about let's talk about STEM. These are actually the in thing and maybe the quite a major issue that's been the, uh, dis uh, discussed lately uh, because the, the issue about how to promote STEM, you know, how to promote science uh, so that students have the interest to study science. Um, so, in your opinion, what's what actually the issue about STEM, and how do we promote STEM uh, to our students? Yeah, I think it's it's such a multifactorial issue. Mm -hmm. uh, the student uptake for I think uh, sci scientific mm -hmm. courses or scientific mm -hmm. jobs, mm -hmm. maybe. So I think there there's there's things like job prospects that people think about, mm -hmm. and then there's that that non-interest or, or lack of interest mm -hmm. uh, maybe because they think science is hard or dry and and that's I think the area that we can work on and it, it's going to boil down to how do you actually teach students about yeah. science what about yeah teaching Ke science keeping school. it relevant to yeah. their daily lives uh, and make it interesting maybe yeah you know? yeah absolutely and and there's only so much you can learn from a book. Yeah, yeah. I think science is all about observation mm -hmm. and, and experience, discovery. really. Discovery. Discovery. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's there's things you can discover in your backyard, really. And, yeah. and um, if we had the freedom yeah. to actually yeah. say, okay, today's class is not going to be in the classroom. Yeah. You're just going to go around, yeah. pick up some things, and describe them. Mm -hmm. That's already... Bring the students to the nature yeah. and let them appreciate 
uh, yeah. how much sign is there. Yeah, sign is know? really everywhere, or, or even everywhere. in their houses. Yeah. Bring your, you know, your, an item from your from your house, and mm. let's talk about the signs behind it. It could be mm. toothpaste, it could be biscuits, it could be, you know, <laughs> yeah. their toys. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I, but I think one of the the practical issues is nowadays we have more and more students mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's going to be a logistical issue yeah, but, logistic I, but, issue. I, think, but well, I think it's important to, to create those opportunities somehow we need to address those it, it needs issues. to be addressed yeah. because the longer we don't talk mm-hmm. about it and keep on saying mm-hmm. there's too many students we can't cope yeah then never the worse the problem yeah. is going to be yeah, yeah yeah we never resolve the, yeah. the issues right yeah. Okay, Kai, uh, for your information, uh, our CDA, Center for Development of Academic Excellence, um, will be launch- launching a blog very soon. And in fact, this interview is one of the material that we will use in the Ooh. inaugural issue. Uh, basically, basically, the blog is actually um, aims to communicate science and art, the research that we do uh, in USM, uh, and communicate it to the public in a way that they can understand and appreciate uh, our research findings. So, wh- what do you think of this initiative? I think it's a wonderful initiative. Mm-hmm. I think, as I, I said just now, we've got the one side where we build capacity, mm-hmm. but then we also need the platforms. Yeah. So, something like, like um, simply speaking, mm-hmm. something that people can access readily, mm-hmm. that people mm-hmm. can contribute to mm-hmm. readily, just creates that culture okay. uh, as well. So, so, I really hope it picks up yeah. um, and is embraced. Yeah by the community. It's nice to have you to be part of this uh, inaugural issue, this My interview. Pleasure. <laughs> okay, Kai, uh, you are among the so-called uh, the aspiring academics or aspiring young academics in, in USM and you have gone through that journey. Perhaps uh, uh, the kind of exposure that you have to the fame lab uh, has brought you to a different kind of uh, trajectory. So, do you have any uh, advice to share with the young academics, not only in USM but uh, other places? Sure. Aspiring and perspiring. Okay, uh, perspiring. Young academic. We are now perspiring. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I think what I, this is really advice to myself yeah. as well because you know always aspiring, always yeah. perspiring. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is there's you, you need to know your worth mm-hmm. and what you. Your, your contribution mm-hmm. can be mm-hmm. um, and I think what your principles are there, mm-hmm. there are going to be a lot of things that come that will challenge those things mm-hmm. they'll challenge who you are as the person uh, what you understand to be right and wrong what your priorities are mm-hmm. and at the same time you have responsibilities and, and you know as you aspire more your responsibilities will also grow um, so I think it's really important to to really know who you are in, 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 in all of this, uh, know who your friends are, mm-hmm. and really find opportunities to learn. Mm-hmm. I think wherever you go, uh, there will be always somebody who knows a bit more than you, somebody yeah. who knows a bit less than you, yeah. and being humble it will go a long way. Yeah. Um, even if you graduated from a very top university, <laughs> You know, the, the person next to you yeah. might know a lot more about, yeah. about something else. So I think that humility is, is something everybody really can can mm-hmm. can try and, and hold on to. Yeah. Uh, at, re- at whatever level of your life you, you achieve, there's always somebody who's going to be a bit more. Um, and my husband always says, nobody knows everything. <laughs> Nobody. Yeah. Nobody knows That's everything. That's very true. That's very true. So, we can yeah. always learn from each other. You know. Yeah, no I think better. that continuous yeah. ability to learn and yeah. adapt is going to be very important. That the humility. Yeah. yeah. As you navigate. I think it's a very good point. Your way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Advice for myself. And, and, <laughs> and yeah, I think as an academic, I think we should be a true uh, lifelong learners. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. Never stop learning. Yeah. And to yeah. acquire new knowledge. New skills, because the world the world is changing so Absolutely. fast now with the yeah. technology yeah. And, and so yeah. on. Yeah. So Kai, I think that's a, a very good and very fruitful conversation that we have. Um, so I'd like to thank you for spending your precious time uh, this morning with me to thank have this you conversation. Thank you for spending your precious yeah. time. <laughs> 
talking with okay. me this morning. So thank you, Kai, and maybe we can have another conversation next time. Inshallah. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.